Hi, Pastor Tim. I'm at the dentist's office, so I won't be able to read. <laughs> <laughs> it's I'm at an emergency dental appointment. <laughs> oh, it's okay. I hope you're okay. okay. God bless you. All right. You. <laughs> Thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. God bless you. It's good to have you in class tonight. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Shall we pray? Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless your name. Each end of days, we want to adore you. I am that I am. We praise your name. You are holy. You are faithful. You are the Lord and you never change. You remain the same from everlasting to everlasting. We thank you for the grace to be here. We thank you for what you are doing. We thank you for what you have in stock for us tonight. So, Father, we pray that you give us your Holy Spirit to be our teacher tonight. We pray that you feed us with manna from heaven. Let your word bring transformation. We pray that you grant us clear understanding, divine understanding of your word, so that we may be ready and equipped for the assignment that you have for us. So at the end, we'll be blessed and your name will be praised. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I believe we have uh, the handout that I sent over. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me start recording here. Oh, recording's already started. Okay. Uh, Prophetess Ramona is running late. So, uh, Sister Grace, can you please read the scripture for us? Daniel chapter 7. Daniel chapter 7. I'm reading from the, the ESV version. Okay. Um, it commences Daniel's vision of four four beasts in the first year of Belshazzar 
Apostle, let me read it from my phone, please. It's okay. Yeah, was, uh, I was using the Bible, but the the the. the... Okay, from, from there. Daniel's vision of the four beasts. In the first year of Belshazzar, king, king of Babylon, Daniel saw a dream and vision of his his hand as he lay as he lay in his bed. Then he wrote down the dream and told the sum. Sorry. Then he, sorry, then he, he wrote down the dream and told the sum of the matter. Daniel declared, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of heaven were steering up the great, the great sea. The four great beasts came up out of the sea, different from one another. The first was like a lion and had eagle, eagle's wings. Then I looked, its wings were plucked off and it was lifted up from the ground and made to stand on four feet like a man and the and the wind of a man was given to him so and I'm sorry and the mind of a man was given to him and behold another beast a second one like a bear it raised up on one side it ha it had three rib ribs in its mouth between its teeth and it was told and it was told Arise, devour much flesh. After this, I looked and behold, another like a leopard with four wings of a bird on its back. And the beast had four heads and dominion was given to it. After this, I saw in the night a vision and behold, the fourth beast, terrifying and dreadful, exceedingly strong it had great it had great iron teeth it devoured and broke its pieces and stamped and stamped what was left with its feet it was different from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns i considered the horns and behold there came up among them another horn a little one before which three of the three of the first were plucked up by the roots and behold in this horn were eyes like were eyes like eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things the ancient of days reigns as i looked as i as i looked the as i looked thrones were placed and the ancient of days took his seat his clothing were white as snow and his hair of and his hair and the hair of his head like pure wool his throne was fiery fiery flames its wheels were burning fire a stream of fire issued and came out from before him a thousand thousands served him ten thousand ten times thousands stood before him the court sat in judgment and the books were open. I looked then because of the sound of the great word that the horn was speaking. And I looked and the beast was killed and its body destroyed and given over to the band, the band and, give, uh, and, and given over to be burned with fire. As for the rest of the beast, their dominion were taken was taken away, but their lives were prolonged, prolonged for a season and a time. The Son of Man given dominion. I saw in the night vision, and behold, with the cloud of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. He came to the ancient of days and was presented before him, and to him and and to him was given dominion and glory and the kingdom that all people nations language should serve him his dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away and his kingdom his king and his kingdom one that shall not be destroyed daniel's vision interpreted 
As for me, Daniel, my spirit within me was anxious and the vision, uh, anxious and the visions of my head alarmed me. I approached one of those who stood there and asked him the truth concerning all this. So he told me and made known to me the interpretation of the things. The four great beasts are four kings who shall rise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying with its teeth of iron and crows of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet and about the 10 horns that were on its head and the other horn that came up and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes and a mouth that spoke great things and that seemed greater than its companion. As I looked, this horn were made, as I, as I looked, this, this horn made war with the saints and prevailed over them until the ancient of days came and judgment was given for the sense of the most high. The time came when the saints po possessed the kingdom. Thus he said, as for the fourth beast, there shall be a fourth kingdom on earth, which shall be different from all the kingdoms and it shall devour the whole earth and trample it down and break into pieces and break it into pieces. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom, out of this kingdom, ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the sense of the Most High, and shall think, think to change the times and the laws, and they shall be given into the hands of a time, times, a half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away to be consumed and destroyed to the end. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdoms under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, his kingdom shall be an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me, and my color changed, and I kept the matter in my heart. Amen. God bless you. Uh, tonight, I think it's just going to be you and me. Because we know Sister Zenab is at work and Sister Sherry is a little preoccupied. <laughs> you can see that. <laughs> uh, so God bless you. So Sister Grace is just going to be you. I mean, our discussion and reading tonight. We are still, it's still expecting uh, Prophetess Ramona to join us, I hope. Okay. Uh, on this particular uh, chapter, chapter seven, when you are reading, when you are doing your studying on it, what is it that stood out to you before we get into the extra uh, handout that we have here? What stood out for me were uh, where the, the different the the, the, the the different beasts and and the fact that each kept rising after the other. But when you gave gave a shared with us the handouts and the fact that the interpretation for Daniel was that the different beasts represented the kingdoms and the fact that the first one, which was so powerful, was was uh, their the power their powers were trimmed or its power was trimmed and it was humbled. And then what also stood out for me was um, the, last, um, the last 
kingdom that will come and that is for the son of man that will be will be divine and will dominate all the other kings so for me that's what stood out and but when i got the handout uh, what i understood was that there are going to be different um empires or kingdoms that will arise one after the other and then one that will dominate is that of the son of man that that um and that will take over and subdue the Antichrist because the Antichrist will come and then it will take over and subdue all the other kingdoms and take charge and also subdue the saints. So that's how I conceptualized it and understood it. So. God, God bless you. God bless you. What I think I'll do tonight, instead of us reading it uh, paragraph by paragraph, uh, like I used to do, let me just tell it like a story. I'll just tell it like a story. We have two uh, handouts, uh, one with four pages and one with just a page. The one with a page, I believe I've sent it to us before. Okay. So yes. Daniel chapters. Yeah, please go ahead. You said what? I said yes in the when we were doing the uh, the major prophets, okay. the major prophets. Yes, yes. You shared yes. these these handouts, and you also did some explanation of it. Exactly. So the book of Daniel chapter seven is the beginning of the second half of the book of Daniel because the book of Daniel is divided into two, as we have discussed before. We have the historical part, then we have the prophetical part. So this is the prophetical part of the book of Daniel. Start with chapter 7. And all these visions and dreams and everything that Daniel had is all about the end time. So it's eschatological. So for us to have a better understanding, we have to take and eschatological eyes to look into it for us to have a better understanding. So here, he saw poor beast. And when we look at the one page and doubt that say understanding the end time, understanding end times prophecy, we realize that we have four roles there. Uh, the first one, is just about the kingdom, the kingdoms. And the second one is Daniel chapter two, the third one, Daniel chapter seven, and the fourth one, Daniel chapter eight. We realize that Daniel chapter two and Daniel chapter seven, they're actually saying the same thing. They're saying the same thing. The difference here is Daniel chapter two, that dream was Nebuchadnezzar's dream. So it was Daniel that gave the interpretation. And what, that, what Nebuchadnezzar saw was the image built with different kind of metal, different kind of metals. And it has the head of gold, the breast and arms of silver, uh, the belly and thighs of brass, the legs of iron, the feet and toes of iron and clay. Then there is this stone that smote the image that came from heaven and smote the image. Now, when we look at chapter 7, Daniel saw four different kinds of beasts. He saw a lion, he saw a bear, he saw a leopard, and he saw another animal that you cannot even give description. So the first animal, which is the lion, is the same, it has the same interpretation as the head of gold of the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. It has the same meaning. And if you remember the meaning of the head of gold, then we will understand the meaning of the lion. The lion here that has eagle's wings represent Babylonian empire. Babylonian Empire. And the wings represent its rapid expansion. Rapid expansions. Talk about its swiftness. 
and the, the, the fast it was able to cover the earth. But it gets to a point, these wings were plucked. And what does that represent? It represents after the, uh, even before the death of Nebuchadnezzar, God himself humbled him. God humbled him. And after that, now after his death, the kingdom became weakened. The kingdom of Babylon was never able to rise to the glory of the time of um, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar, that was the height of the popularity or the glory or the power of the kingdom of Babylon. So the Bible says the heart of a man was given to uh, to this lion. That means they become weakened. They become weakened. So it's not as strong as it was. Then the next animal he saw was the bear. From Daniel chapter 7 uh, verse 5, he saw the bear. And this bear was raised up on one side. This animal that he saw, he said he has three ribs in his mouth. So the meaning of this animal is the same as the breast and arm of silver of the image of Nebuchadnezzar, which represents these two kingdoms that form alliance, the Media and the Persians. So we call them Middle Persia. So, but what about rising up on one side? It was raised on one side. Uh, one side is higher than the other. That was talking about the imbalance of these two powerful kingdoms that came together to be one. So it's talking about the kingdom of Persia being more powerful than the kingdom of Midian. And the three ribs in his mouth is talking about the major conquest three major conquests of Persian Empire, of Middle Persian Empire, that they conquered Lydia, they conquered Babylon, and they conquered Egypt. They conquered Egypt. And the next animal that he saw here was the leopard, the leopard. And he saw this leopard that has four wings of a fowl, and it has four heads, and he received dominion. When we look back to chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, it's the same interpretation with the belly and the thigh of brass. And that represents the Grecian Empire that has their leader as Alexander the Great. Alexander the Great. What about the wings of fowl that he has? These this four wings talks about the swiftness and the fastness, the way it was able to cover the earth and conquer the old world, and conquer the old world. And four heads, as we see, we we'll never will talk more about this when we study the book of Revelation, if I'm correct, probably uh, next semester. When you hear the word head or horns in, in, um, in prophetic teaching is talking about kings or kingdom. It's talking about kings or kingdoms. So this four heads is talking about four kingdoms that will come out of this one kingdom, the, uh, the Grecian Empire, the Grecian Empire. And when we look at this forehead, how will that happen? We have a better understanding when we get to chapter eight next week. But let me quickly break it down uh, so we won't have to go through that again. Uh, in a very young age, in his early 30, Alexander the Great died after conquering the whole world. Alexander the Great died. When he died, four of his generals came together. Four generals came together uh, they killed Alexander's uh, sons and they took the kingdom for themselves and the kingdom was divided into four. 
and each of them rule over each new uh, division of this kingdom. But don't forget the saying that says, united we stand, divided we fall. Because the, the kingdom was divided, they became weakened, became weakened. And this kingdom was divided into four. The first general, his name is uh, Ptolemy. The second is Seleucid. The fourth is Cassander. And I mean, the third and the fourth is Lysimachus. Lysimachus. And each of the kingdom that they ruled over the division of uh, each division of this kingdom, uh, the Ptolemy kingdom, the Asian location of that kingdom is Egypt, part of the Levant and Cyprus. But the current location today, how can we find where that kingdom is today? Is the current location of Egypt, Israel, Palestine, Lebanon, and Cyprus. And the key city then was Alexandria, Alexandria. What about Seleucid Empire? The ancient location was Persia, Mesopotamia, Syria, and parts of Asia Minor. But if we want to locate it today, we can find in the parts of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, Iran, and parts of Afghanistan and Pakistan. And the key city is Antioch. And what about Cassandra Empire? We call it Antigonid Kingdom. The ancient location is in Macedonia and parts of Greece. But the current, current uh, location is still the same thing. They still bear the same name, Greece and North Macedonia. And the key city is Macedon. What about the kingdom of Lysimachus? We call it Atalid dynasty. The ancient location was Western Asia Minor, um, which is modern day Turkey. The current city is Turkey and Bulgaria and Bulgaria. And the key city then was Pergamon. Pergamon. So we see the division. But when you look at uh, the one page uh, understanding end time prophecy that sent to us, you see, we simplify it right there. That these four kingdoms, the current location of each of them was Greece, Turkey, Egypt, and Syria. If anyone asks, you can just say, is that simple? Greece, Turkey, Egypt, and Syria. Now, we see in the fourth animal, the first beast that they saw in the Revelation, he could not even describe it. The Bible says it was dreadful and terrible. It was dreadful and terrible. So this animal, the interpretation of it is the same interpretation as the legs of iron of the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dreams in chapter 2. And as we know, if we remember, the interpretation is it it represents Roman's empire, Roman's empire. And when we look at it here, I broke it down in, uh, let me see if I can get to the fourth beast here. Okay, the description of the fourth beast, it says dreadful and terrible, which means it instills fear. Uh, uh, strong and uh, strong exceedingly, which talks about unparalleled strength. He has great iron teeth, which talks about the destructive capability and might of the Roman Empire. What about devouring and breaking in pieces? It's, talk, it's talking about aggressive and destructive in nature. Then out of it, ten on came out. Because out of this animal, he has ten on, ten on came out. Ten on represent ten kings or kingdoms that will arise from this empire. Because this empire, it gets to a point as the empire became really strong because of uh how can I how can I put it? 
uh, looking for the right word to explain this. Okay, let me say, because of the unrest in the empire, so the empire broke into two. The empire was divided into two. And because of this, Roman Empire became weakened. And out of these two division of Roman Empire, we come 10 kingdom. Like we always say, Roman empires never fell, but it got weakened. It got weakened. And today they are reforming. So what, when, what do I mean by reformation? Uh, let me use the word revision. Because what is going on now is what we call revised Roman Empire. And this revised Roman Empire is what we know as European Union today. European Union. That is the old Roman Empire revised. The old Roman Empire revised. So now, out of this European Union, right now we have too many nations that are part of European Union. A time is coming, I would say it is right now, because it's happening now. This European Union, there will be 10 powerful nations that will dominate the Union. That 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 these 10 arms represent. Because right now, the purpose of the, the vision of chapter 7 and the vision of chapter 8, because the vision of end time, the purpose is for us to know where is this little arm coming from. We want to know the identity we want to know the nationality of this little on. And as we know that little the little on represent the Antichrist. Represent the Antichrist. So, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Uh, Sister Grace, you have all the books. The series that I sent over. Yes, they, I do. Yes. Take time to read the one title. The little horn is going to explain this in much more detail and narrow it down like you have a microscope to locate where this little horn is going to come from. There are so many people that believe that Antichrist is coming from old Roman Empire. Because of that, they come to a conclusion that Antichrist is coming from Rome. So don't let me put the card before the horse. We will address that next week. Whenever we are talking about this, I said our chapter 7 of the book of Daniel was great. That revelation was deep. It was very detailed. But thank God for chapter 8 because chapter 8 narrows it down and helps us to actually... Uh, discover where this man, the man Antichrist, we come from. So by God's grace, by next class, we should be able to do that in chapter 8. So this little on has eyes like a man, its mouth speak great things, and he approved three other horns out of ten. This ten horns, the little on destroy three of them and it sits in their place. It sits in their place. And because of his conquest over these three arms, don't forget arms represent kings or kingdom. Because he conquered these three kings or kingdoms, the remaining seven, we surrender to him. They will surrender to him because they don't want to suffer the same fate like these three uh, kingdoms that he just destroyed. They will surrender to him. Then his mouth will start boasting. The Bible says his mouth speak great things. So we talk more 
about it next week in our next session. All right, then after that, the Bible tells us that the ancient of days, we descend. We don't have to spend too much on the ancient of days. We know the ancient of days is God the Father. But it was in this book of Daniel chapter 7 that we find out that God the Father we actually come to us to hand over the kingdom to the Son of Man, the transfer of power. I remember the first time I was teaching this, and somebody was, some people were looking at me and I said, You crazy. So I told them, I said, Let's go into the scripture, the Bible, as the final say. The Bible tells us that the ancient of days will come and add over the kingdom to the son of man. So what kingdom are we talking about here? We are talking about the king, uh, the millennial reign kingdom. We are talking about the kingdom of Jesus Christ that will rule here on earth for a thousand years. And after the kingdom was handed over to the son of man, the Bible tells us that the kingdom will be given to the saints to the saints. Don't forget that we will come back with the Son of Man, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We will come back after the rapture. We spend time, seven years with him. We will return with him to reign and to rule here on earth. So the kingdom will be given to us as, I mean, the saints, the kingdom will be given to us because we will rule with Christ here on earth. We will rule with him here on earth. So, like I said, if I tell you like a story, sometimes it may take me just 20 minutes. So is there any question here? Because is that's it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty much clear from how you've explained it. Um, I think I can I can I can recite it again the way you have said it if I Amen. Back to I, I um, like what I wanted, what I wanted to clarify is what King Nebuchadnezzar dreamt. The vision King Nebuchadnezzar had in his dream is exactly the same event in this one, right? That's correct. The same interpretation. It's the same interpretation, the same and then name. the unfolding of the events are the same, right? That's correct. Okay. That's I correct. That was all I wanted to see. I wanted to understand and ensure that, you know, the two are the same. Mm. You say the head of gold of Nebuchadnezzar's, uh, the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream is the lion here. It has the same meaning. Okay. The breast and arm of silver is the beard here. And the belly and the thigh of brass is leopard here. And the legs of iron is the animal that cannot be described, that dreadful and terrible animal here. And the feet and toes of iron and clay is the ten horns here. The only thing that is missing here is the little horn that is missing in Daniel chapter 2. In Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he didn't see the little horn. He saw the smote, I mean the stone that smote the image, that's the son of man. The kingdom of the son of man that is coming. So he saw that as well. So uh this when so mm -hmm. when Daniel says he was terrified by this dream, he was only terrified by the little horn, right? No, he was, terrified, he was he was terrified by the by the dream from the beginning. But apostle, why would he be terrified when he had actually received the same interpretation of a similar dream? Is it because he did not he did not perceive that it was the same dream that Nebuchadnezzar had, having gone through all this? Why is this being repeated with Daniel? When because not only Daniel, we will get more clarification in chapter eight, and it's repeated again in the book of Revelation. The same minute, the same interpretation. And when God is re saying something repeatedly, he's telling you about the importance of the matter. And why was Daniel so 
dreadful about this and so scared. He was scared before the interpretation was given him. He saw a lion that has eagle's wings. Lions don't have wings. <laughs> Does that make sense? <laughs> he saw the bear that has two ribs in his mouth. That's okay. But the leopard that has four wings and four heads. Leopards has only one head. They don't have four heads and they don't have wings. So this vision was very troubling. But what kind? Now, when he saw the fourth animal, he couldn't even describe it. So he was terrified. So that's why, until the angel now started giving him the interpretation, the meaning of the dream. Don't forget that in Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he was the interpreter. Right? Yes. But here, he was not the interpreter. The dream, had, I mean, the vision had to be interpreted to him. So, uh, so, if, so after it was interpreted to him, that's when he realized it was the same dream that the same, he exactly interpreted for Nebuchadnezzar. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Prophecy is very interesting. I'm not talking about being prophesied. I'm talking about the end time prophecy. Yes, it's, it's very, the, same, the same thing. Interesting. <laughs> very, very interesting. Very interesting subject. Mm -hmm. If if one gets, let me use the word, like me, I'm obsessed with it. If one showed interest in it, you can't stop. Because the more you search, the more you dig, the more you know, the more you find out. And it's something that we need to find out because this is the time. This is the time that the Bible has been talking about. The church needs to find out now. Or else it will be too late. It will be too late. Thank so you. with we with, with thank God for the grace. For this class. <laughs> I'm not forgetting to sit in this class because nobody ever talks about these things. Nobody, the people don't. People don't. Ministers don't. No. One, you know, um, let, let me stop the recording at this point. So, uh, okay.